Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition, and with the second trailer for Peninsula now out, there's a lot to sink your teeth into. The Train to Busan sequel is getting a lot of hype behind it, and throughout this video we're going to be breaking down the new trailer, giving our thoughts on it, and discussing everything that you need to know about the movie. There may be some spoilers here, so if you want to go into the film as blind as possible, then I highly suggest that you turn off now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for updates on the film as we get them, and also drop a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. But out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into our breakdown of Peninsula. Okay, so if you missed our last breakdown on the movie and just need a quick catch up, then the next part of the video is for you. The title Peninsula means a mass of land surrounded by water, and Korea itself is actually classified as one. From this, it's a safe assumption to make that due to the events of the first movie, the country has been completely quarantined and no one is allowed in or out of it. The first film ended with a feeling that the virus and all the survivors of the outbreak were being stopped at the border, and thus we can take from this that the country is completely in lockdown and has been for the last four years. Topical, right? As with most sequels though, we're scaling up, so where the first film took place predominantly on a train, judging by the title and the nature of sequels in general, this movie will likely be taking place across most of Korea. It's also been completely finished filming wise, so we will definitely be seeing its release come the 30th of July. Now as for the story, when the trailer first dropped it came with a plot synopsis that said the following. Four years after the events of Train to Busan, all of Korea has been abandoned and all that's left is its geography, zombies and the ruins of South Korea. A group of marines on a retrieval mission get trapped inside and start to witness something that will test the fate of the world. Initially, we speculated that this was going to perhaps be a biological weapon or something far worse. However, this trailer reveals that they're instead going back into the country in order to retrieve a bag full of money. This has been left behind on a truck and an American gangster seemingly wants to get it back and then split it with the group. Since the country destabilised, it's likely that many of the survivors of the outbreak were left very poor and you can probably guess that they're all struggling to get by. Imagine a pandemic for years and years where you can't really get a stable job and people are trying to eat you all the time. No doubt 2.5 million would seem like something that's worth risking your life for. Now the first trailer did say in an abandoned world and I had a couple of people in the comments disagreeing with me over this matter. I said that I think the word world was just referring to Korea and that the rest of Earth would be okay and the opening of this teaser seems to confirm that. I can't see any reason why they would want the money if the rest of the planet was completely in ruins, so we can take from this mission that England, good old England, still bloody fine and dandy we are. It also seems like the main character Jung Suk escaped the outbreak after seeing it first hand. The trailer opens with him saying the words, go back in there? So in order to go back in there, he has to have been there before. And yeah, ca Captain Obvious here, surprised they didn't ask me to do the job. Now if you cast your mind back to the first film, you may remember that the zombies were pretty useless in the dark and that they weren't much of a threat if you could keep the lights out. I can imagine that it was proposed that this would be an easy job and that all the group would have to do is be as quiet as possible and get back before sunrise. At one point in the trailer a character also says let's move after sundown, so it seems like the characters are well aware that it's easy to tackle disease when they're having Z's. Get it? S sleep joke, sleep joke. Now though the zombies are useless in the dark, sound attracts them a lot and clearly one of the characters setting off a car alarm doesn't help them to stay stealthy. Though they get the money, this noise is going to bring a lot of trouble their way and thus some survivors step in to save their lives. I'm guessing this kind of puts them in debt to them and they'll probably want a way out as I can imagine living in Korea during these times it's probably worse than this YouTube channel. Anyway, it's a great rescue scene and I love how there's flares shot into the air to bring the forces of the undead away as the light is something that they're attracted to. So it seems like they set out to aid each other and the rest of the trailer centers around them tackling the zombies in different scenarios. This eventually leads to them coming face to face with the villains of the piece that seem to be rounding up humans and making them fight against the undead. In our last breakdown we stated that it looked like this scene was taking place in a prison and that this may have been a group of criminals that were left in their cells whilst the guards and rest of the population fled. The prisoners were running the prison and in the first trailer to me at least it added an escape from New York aesthetic to the film. However, looking at it here and getting a couple more close-ups, 
I think it might actually be set in a shopping mall. There are a pair of escalators, which I don't think that they would really have in a prison, and this location could be a slight nod to Dawn of the Dead. Those captured by the group are forced to fight in gladiator arenas, but looks like they managed to escape and make another run for the border in a jeep. Clearly they're tracked by the villains, and I love the Mad Max style chase scene that seems to be happening towards the end of the film. Again, this could be another reference to Escape from New York, and overall it looks like it's going to be an amazing climax in which they have to ram into hordes of zombies whilst also keeping the people that want them dead off their back. They're also having to outrun the sun, and yeah, just a lot of things going on in the finale by the looks of it. Now, a couple of miscellaneous things that you may have noticed that I do think need to be touched upon. There's a remote control car that is used to distract zombies, and also a Gatling gun that fires flares. Clearly, these have both been chosen for their bright lights, and will be used to draw the zombies away from the humans. I think I pretty much got everything in this trailer, but yeah, let me know if you noticed something that I missed. If you watched my first breakdown, then you'll know that I thought the movie looked a bit cliched, which was a shame because the first film was so unique. However, seeing it here, it's almost like a heist movie set during a zombie apocalypse, and that definitely makes me more excited. The first film managed to keep audience members engaged because it kept switching up the locations whilst keeping things central to the train. Here though, it seems like they're going above and beyond that, and keeping the group constantly moving. I think it's fitting that it looks like it's going to end in a big chase, as the speed of the train towards the end of the prior entry, and the running that went on in the last half hour, really kept your blood pumping. Overall, this looks like an immense movie, and I do trust James Wan to deliver something that audiences love. He's really become a big name in horror over the last decade or so, and everything he touches seems to do well, so I do have a lot of faith in the movie. While I was initially only slightly interested in the film, this trailer has got me all aboard the movie, and I can't wait to see if this ride is just the ticket. Sorry, some crap train puns there. Now, there have been a lot of theories that this is going to tie in with Kingdom on Netflix, a Korean zombie show set centuries ago. The rumours are that the disease in that is also linked to the one in this, but as of now, we don't really have any information on whether this is true or not. Though the creative team behind the two aren't linked, I think in my head I will forever think of them being part of the same universe, but sadly, as of now, we have no official confirmation on whether this is the case or not. I really hope there's some easter eggs in the movie that kind of hint towards it, but yeah, as of now, we have no idea, but, but let's keep hoping that they link them somehow. I mean, the zombies, are, they're, they're the same. Please do it. Come on, one, please. Now, obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the trailer, and if you're as hyped for the movie as I am. I think it's going to be one of the big releases of the year, and let's be honest, it doesn't really have much to compete against. Now, make sure you comment below and let me know, and if you enjoyed this video and want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of one of the worst movies of all time, 365 Days, which is going to be linked at the end. If you want to support the channel from as little as 99 cents a month, then please click the join button below. We massively appreciate it, and as a thank you, you get access to content early. If you want to come chat to us after the show, either follow us at Heavy Spoilers, or click the Discord link in the description below. Every month we give away free movies to people who are subscribed to the channel, and this month you can win the MCU Infinity Saga box set, and all you have to do is comment on a video, and make sure you subscribe with notifications on. The more videos you comment on, the more you have a chance of winning, so make sure you get involved. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of July, and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is a channel for people who are mad into movies, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Huge thank you for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.